Hi, this is the bad boy, Joey Janela, and you're listening to the Going In Raw podcast. Joey Janela always goes in. This is the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, and you are listening to Going In Raw. Hey everyone, Kenny Omega here. In case you didn't know, we have an awesome kick butt show called Stephen Larson's Going In Raw, and they're going to be supporting AEW every week amongst many other things. Goodbye and smooch. Good night. Bye bang. Hey, Brendo, Steve here. And Lars. Yeah, welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Larson, filmed live at the Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Stephen Larson, and of course found in the audio realm. If you're listening to my voice right now on a podcast app, leave us a rating, review, or a comment. It goes a long way towards helping Going In Raw grow in Raw. And uh, yeah, earlier today we had our news brief episode. You can check that out right now on news, on, on YouTube or in the podcast apps. Uh, we talked about, unfortunately, uh, it was confirmed that Shad Gaspard uh, did in fact pass away. His body was found. Um, so, you know, once again, our hearts go out to his family. Yes. Yes. Uh, but we're here to talk about AEW. But before we do that, uh, today on what do we do today on Friendo Club TV, Larson? Uh, we, we we booked fantasy book the worst possible double or nothing. That's right. We put our imaginations to the test and each of us came up with a horrible, horrible, bad. horrible. just really bad double worst. or nothings. Uh, but you know, I worked really hard on mine and I know you worked for about five minutes on yours. Five minutes is generous, but you still did a pretty good job. You can find that episode of friendo club TV right now at patreon.com forward slash Steven Larson. Or if you are a sub on the Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Steven Larson, I think what I might start doing for the Twitch subs is at the end of the week, I'll conglomerate all the YouTube links and then I'll send them out also as a weekly thing. In case somebody missed or like, oh, I want to see that, you know, you'll get that on Friday. Uh, and then also uh, YouTube channel members got that episode as well. They get all the bonus stuff. You just click on click join on YouTube member or YouTube page of Stephen Larson. Yes, That's how you do. It. Anyways, uh, AEW is the go home episode for double or nothing. And uh, we got a big to do at the end in the stadium where the Young Bucks and Hangman Page uh, came to the rescue well after. Uh, the the inner circle beat the crap out of Kenny Omega with a baseball oh, man, he, bat. He, he was he was beat to hell, man. Beat to hell. I mean, they've been gone this long. They couldn't have like been there 15 minutes earlier. Well, maybe? my my guess is that not only did uh, Hangman Page run the full length of the football field, I think he did in fact run from the forest of North Carolina. Oh, that could be. So could you be. know, he he maybe he got his phone out. You know, you you could check how long it takes to to walk to a destination. Well, it's like a lot of them running, so I could take a couple hours off this probably. But, you know, it's, it's a ballpark thing. Yeah. With all that. So yeah. it's probably fortunate that he got there as close to the moment he really wanted to as he did. You got to account for weather, road conditions, all sorts of stuff. I take what Google Maps gives me or Apple Maps gives me. I undershoot it so that I know I'm going to get there early. But that's mm-hmm. me. I'm a professional. Yeah, I like getting places early. I don't like being late. One of my pet peeves is being late. There is oh. one exception mm. to that rule. Parties. I hate getting to parties early. I don't want to be sitting there on the couch and nobody else is there. So I want to get there well the after. The issue with me is, is, is I agree with you. I don't want to be within the first few people at the party. Same time, it, it, like I get really anxious when I, when I know I'm running late. It really bothers me. Just really in general, me. and that extends the part. We see Lacey is the same way, but then I just tell her it doesn't matter. They they don't care. The people hosting this thing are more concerned about putting on a decent party than where Lacey is, where than where Steve is. Nobody here's cares. The thing. I, the thing is, though, is is when you're actually throwing the party and you're ready and you got everything ready, and, and it's time people to be there, and no one's there, and you think to yourself, "Where's everybody?" Where is everybody? See, I'm Nobody different. Here. In my head, I'm like, more food for me, more drink for me. Good. I hope they don't come. I don't like people. <laughs> Why well, have a party? Stay away from my party. So I have a party, but you're not going to invite anybody. It's Well, you know, it's for a celebration. People, but encourage them not to come. Anyways, we got a celebration coming up this Saturday, double or nothing. Uh, and uh, be sure to join us on the YouTubes, youtube.com forward slash Stephen Larson. We'll have our 
uh, live reactions. That should be a lot of fun. Uh, AEW, I thought AEW was pretty decent. It was, it was, <laughs> it was marred by like a little bit. There was some, there was a little bit of recklessness going on tonight. Uh, yeah, no one was uh, was pulling any punches. Uh, do we um, know? Is there any update on Britt online. Baker and that knee of hers? Because it looked I like she might have got hurt. I have not seen anything yet, but I'm guessing it's probably not that great considering the landing, considering her how uh, she was reacting after that spot. I'm guessing it's probably not very good. Well, hopefully it's just a tweak and it's not like something I hope so, too. I hope so, because she's stuff. been doing awesome, awesome, awesome work. It'd be a shame when she's on such a good run to have kind of a fluke injury, uh, uh, take her off TV for a protracted period of time, because you're worried... You know, you get forced on the front of the knee downward. Mm -hmm. You're worried, uh, torn ACL, a ligament that goes to the center of the knee, uh, and that's <laughs> protracted rehabilitation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's just dive into it, though, because there's every segment has something that we can talk about as it pertains to double or nothing. There are some things that stick out to me. Uh, uh, I don't know. It's sort of been building up a little bit. Just And then for this episode, I'm just going to let it all out. Uh, oh, good. Good. So uh, let, let's, uh, let's get through this. Uh, the inner circle arrive at Daly's place. Uh, I actually did not see this for whatever reason. I think my kid was oh, okay. like bugging me. So, yeah. Limo comes up. Uh, inner circle comes out. Alex Marvez runs up, asks Jericho a question. He tells him to shut his ass. <laughs> and he says, uh, if you think what we did to Vanguard 1 was bad, just wait and see what we do to the Elite tonight. And the Marvez is like, well, what are you going to do? And then everybody takes turns making fun of him. Oh, and what'd they say? Uh, I don't know. It was just like, you think we're going to tell you? idiot oh. uh and then ortiz took something from him. he looks at it and says i think this might be worth something in this left oh wow it was real debo something real debo behavior going on yeah i got 200 <laughs> i got 200 give me your bike give me your bike fool <laughs> <laughs> oh it's debo they start tucking their jewelry in <laughs> <laughs> what's the exact line we take that dude's bike that cracks me up every time I want your bike. That's what it is. I want your bike. Isn't it? <laughs> I want your bike, fool. <laughs> hey, Red. I want your bike. <laughs> My favorite was when they go, they steal that money from uh, from uh, their next door neighbor's house, Stanley's house, and they come out, and then uh, I, uh, Craig is like, "Hey, what'd you guys get?" And uh, and uh, Chris Tucker uh, uh, says, "We got two hundred dollars." And Debo just says, "I got two hundred dollars." <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we could talk about Friday all day long. First up, we had the number 10 taking on John Moxley ten. in a ten. numbers match. A numbers match. But there first, uh, Brody, uh, Mr. Brody Lee had a promo. He wants to address viewers at home. His eye to our eye. He tells 10 to take a knee. Uh, it's like, no, do it right. <laughs> yeah. Did he did did he do anything different once he said do it right because it didn't he look like he straightened up a little bit. Oh, okay. So uh, he said he tells the viewers at home there might be a disconnect. Who is an athlete at the top of his game? He can't relate to viewers at home, but that's wait. What is this? <laughs> I'm lost in your notes here. Sorry. Uh, where did you leave off? <laughs> tells viewers at home there might be a disconnect. Who is an athlete uh, at the top of his game? Oh, that he is an athlete at the top oh. of his game. This is fast. I got to do it fast. No, it's fine. Uh, it's fine. I'm sorry. I'm not talking like, shit. I'm sorry. You better not be. No. Take your bike from you. Um, <laughs> That's your $200. He says uh, he can relate to viewers at home. Oh, the viewers at home think that he can't relate to them, but that's wrong. He can't walk on water. I know. He says, I know it's hard to fathom, but I am not a god. I am but a man. Yeah. A man who has come to possession of a very special piece. Yeah. He starts talking about, you know, the Dark Order before, which seemed to be more of a supernatural thing, and then the Dark Order now with Brody Lee. I wish they'd kayfabe the, I wish we'd get the kayfabe story of how he showed up as the exalted one. Yeah. We have hardly seen anything of Uno or Stu Grayson since uh, Brody Lee came around. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be honest with you, man. So this is the first thing I'm going to go off on. Now that we have a big chunk of Brody Lee as the exalted one, uh, it just doesn't fit. It just I don't see it, man. I think that so here's the thing that like AEW is gonna have to realize if they bring in dudes from WWE. We know them as a thing. We have been presented with them as a particular thing. When uh FTR come in. It will. Mm -hmm. I, I believe this. I think that it will be as if they just got out of WWE. I think there's not going to be. They're going to have different names. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But obviously. they're going to be the same guys. There's going to be, like, some continuity there. Yeah, there's not going to be a whole lot of 
wholesale gimmick change. Just no, to no. Yes. With yeah. Brody Lee, and I know this is this is a bit of a. It, there's always there's always going to be a risk creatively create create creatively when you're doing creatively. something like this. A creative risk when you're doing something like this. Basically, a wholesale gimmick change. And they tried to sort of bridge the gap with his initial promo, but at the end of the day, to steal the wrestling parlance. It just doesn't work for me. Well, they're shoehorning. I know he says this isn't a Vince thing. It started out as a Vince thing. They're shoehorning this Vince thing into yeah. something that was this kind of cult supernatural thing. And they they could have followed through on it more, maybe, because there is definitely in some circles a cult of personality around Vince McMahon. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I, I felt like if they had gone more that direction rather than just introducing that and like, uh, no, we'll just make him kind of general cult leader. Yeah. Um, Maybe at least there have been a through line because I feel like they've lost what the character is at this point. I feel like more that's the problem than anything else. If he had kept on doing the uh, the overtly Vince stuff Mm -hmm. and made this battle of Brody Lee, Vince McMahon essentially against the guy that was Dean Ambrose who had such beef with Vince, yeah, that's something interesting. Yeah, I I don't disagree with that. I think that's 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 a good idea. When I try to think of the continuity between where we saw him before. It's just, that's just a fact of life. You can't do Isaac Yankum. I mean, Kane worked because he had a mask and we didn't see, you know, it was, Oh, okay. Well, it's just not Isaac Yankum. Also, Isaac Yankum was never really established as he was around, but he never really established as sure. Sure. Much yeah. of anything, you know? So uh, I don't know, man. I think that there was probably a way to bring him in, in his first appearance as the exalted one. I think is probably the mistake. I think they should have been building up the exalted one thing. You bring him in with some amount of continuity between what we saw in WWE and what, and what he is now, you know, he comes over, not necessarily as Luke Harper, but he can be as former WWE employee guy, you know, but it was just, there was never that continuity of, okay, what's the story here? Why is he the exalted one? He was in WWE when all this stuff was, was being built. Mm -hmm. Um, It just didn't make any sense. And now that he's in the role, it's just, yeah, he's in that weird he was Vince, and now he's, like, just his own thing. And, I mean, the bottom line is, I feel like if he fit, if if the man fit the character, or if he had, like, a really solid idea of who he was, then I would probably be able to forgive that stuff. It just, for me personally, it just doesn't work. And like I'm, said, try, I'm so. still trying to figure out what the Dark Order is. I still I, think that yeah. Brody Lee is probably still, a, you know, he's a very talented guy. And we have seen flashes of some really good stuff on the mic. And I like that his wrestling stuff is is freed up quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think there's still a lot to work with. But I just, you know, I don't know. They got to put they got to push past this and, and, and figure out what the hell the Dark Order actually is. Yeah, they've never really established a through line for the Dark Order and beyond the first few appearances for Brody never really seemed it seems like he, there's something that he in mind that he wants to do and they're trying to shoehorn that to this whole dark order thing but they've never had a good through line of what the dark order really even is mm-hmm. um so it's all it's all just you know the dark order started of it started as probably the first major creative misstep and they've never completely recovered from it yeah so yeah uh, anyways he talks some more this is, uh, Saturday he has to win satisfies hunger to pay off the love of these men the creepers uh, talks about Ted. He was special. Uh, now Ted is high knight of the Dark Order, and he's just there to hurt Moxley. Try as he might, he didn't do that great of a job of hurting Moxley. He got a little bit of offense in. And the day, though, uh, Mox escapes Firebird's carry, drops Ted with DDT, follows the Gotch style pile driver. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Minoru Suzuki. Mm-hmm. And follows the paradigm shift for the win. They really tried to sell that Mox was like, I'm looking for the creepers everywhere. Where yeah. the creepers at? Yeah. Where the yeah. creepers? No creepers to be found. He hits paradigm shift. He wins. He tosses a couple chairs in the ring, grabs a mic, puts Ten's arm inside the chair. Uh, Mox says he doesn't know the strategy behind taking his belt. Uh, yeah, I just think you're trying to punk me out, Brody Lee. So, uh, Lee, I'm giving you 10 seconds to come out or I'm going to break this dude's arm. Uh, Brody shows the Tron, says Mox, doesn't call the shots. He said, if you want your belt back, all you have to do is ask. But now you've made it personal. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. And at times like these, we all have to make sacrifices. Goes on some more, but that's kind of the gist of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, after that, uh, Marco stunt versus MJF. Uh, MJF was in a playful mood. He ate Marco. He made Marco eat one of his own boogers, and that was kind of funny. Um, wait a second. Did you mention the part where uh, Mox destroyed that dude's arm? No. Oh yeah, 
Right after Unless Brody Lee leaves, Mox, uh, he says, yeah, okay. And then he just, like, destroys the guy's arm with the chair. Oh, dang. Yeah, that was rough. I was having some internet issues. That's why we're yeah. starting late. Um, well, yay for me. There's one part I was paying attention. I was like, oh, is he really going to do this? This is cool. <laughs> Did he really just go, oh, okay, and then smash his arm? Uh, yeah, kind of. Kind of. Okay. He was like, uh, okay, fine. It was something like, I don't know what it was. He, I think he, I think he got back on the mic and like yelled back at him or something. But, yeah. uh, yeah, and then he just, he just did that. Yeah, so. He was like, uh, yeah, fine. I'll, I'll smash this dude's arm. All right. So, uh, thing number two that I have a problem with. Uh oh, this is Aaron Greaves. His Festivus has come early. A little bit. Why the hell is Marco Stunt in AEW? Every jobber that shows up on dark on the lowest rung of dark puts on more dominant performances than Marco stunt. This guy, there is, there is a bigger size discrepancy between Ray Mysterio and Kevin Nash. than there is Marco stunt and MJF. And yet Ray Mysterio gave Kevin Nash all sorts of fits when they would fight. Why is it Marco stunt? can't land one bit of offense why has he been like kayfabe why has marco stunt been hired by aew he he won on dark they said yesterday did he yeah they said he beat jason cade i think on dark. oh okay he got some offense in this match he had that nice rada thing and sent uh mjf into the corner he cool. just man he gets destroyed i mean to be unfair that's kind of that's, that's been his thing no, I know, but when is it not going to be his thing? When am I going to see something? Well, maybe I have to watch Dark, I guess. Yeah. All right. Sorry. You're only reading half the book, man. Okay, come on. Wait, I'm supposed to watch another two? <laughs> Isn't Dark like two hours now? No, I think it's just an hour. I think like you read, I think, you read I think House it was of Leaves and found, the, and found the, the traditional narrative part of it that's too conventional for you. And so I you think, just disregard uh, that. I think yesterday, hold on a second. I think, well, I think the, the last lot. couple darks have been like super darks. I think literally that's what they've called them, I think. Oh, wow. Hold on a second. Maybe I'm wrong about this. Where does dark, where does that run? <laughs> it's it on their AEW YouTube? YouTube channel, man. Where's dark? Oh, here it is. Yeah, yesterday was an hour and a half. Well, it's not quite two hours. <laughs> For TV, it'd be two hours. Oh, man. So anyways, MJF wins. He puts the Fujiwara arm bar, as he calls it, salt of the earth on Marco. Marco taps. MJF gets a promo. Uh, it's like, hey, Marco, you did great because you lasted much longer than we all thought you would. So I'm going to give you a little present. A kiss uh, from, I guess, one of his friends in Jacksonville. Uh, but he's like, but, you know. Friends? He called of- him. He said rat. Yeah. He's a rat. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, man. You could say it. Um, he says, no, I was going to kiss you. Uh, so instead, he, he gets the ring, clocks him with it. Outruns the jungle, jungle Boy and uh, uh, Luchasaurus. They make the save. Uh, MJF and, and Wardlow run off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, anyways, Marco Stunt needs to not be wrestling. Wow. He's the, he's the bulk up and then come back. Anyways, next. This was great. Yeah, I love Jake Arnation. Roberts and Arn Anderson. I could watch them. Do uh, 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 table debates all day long. Heck Keep yeah, these man. guys. Keep these guys. I think these guys have something. <laughs> you think they have something? They have a future ahead of them? I think they might, yeah. Yeah. yeah this was good stuff. He says, yeah. uh, this was interesting. Uh, given how long both these guys were in wrestling, they never wrestled in the ring. That's what they said. Yeah, that's what Jake said. Well, that's what he said. I wonder if maybe they had. It was just never like televised or popularized or something. Could be. Yeah. I did like some, some, some of these lines uh, were pretty weighty. Pretty quickly, Jake says, dreams and nightmares, they aren't real. Yeah. Good American dream, American nightmare. Yeah. Uh, but Lance Archer is. He destroyed everything and put in front of him. But Cody, well, he's just sacrificed his own brother, so you have to face Lance. But he's going to have to come face to face with the truth. Uh, Lance is a mean son of a bitch, uh, asks Arn. If you're on the weekend <laughs> pass, you're looking a bit thick. Yeah, he was throwing a lot at him, wasn't he? You are yeah. on a weekend pass. You're looking thick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Iron's like, I, I almost made me believe in you, Jake. Uh, and says, you know, the thing about Jake and I, he uses some uh, saying that I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was great, which essentially was a way of saying that both he and Jake are credible. And mm-hmm. he says, you know, uh, uh, Jake, your evil permeates the length of this table, the six, eight foot table, whatever it is. And he says, I remember back in the day when you used to be in the locker room, you had your, your, your bag with a snake in it. 
And I realized even back then, the snake wasn't what you had to worry about. That was a distraction from the real evil. That was that evil was in Jake. And Jake's like, I've been to hell and back. One more trip with you, Arn, be worth it. And Arn's like, pardon me? And Jake says, essentially, it was a six, eight feet. Let's let's throw down. Let's go. Yeah, he wanted to fight. That was rad. I want to see those old bastards fight. That'd be gross. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> and gross. <laughs> I was, said, I was trying to say great and dope at the same time, but it came out as gross, which is apropos as well. <laughs> uh, Arn's like, I can't do that because decorum. Uh, but he's going to talk about Tyson. He says, I talked to Tony Khan. Tyson's going to have free reign in the entire venue, a double or nothing. Go up the stand in the ring if he wants to. Uh, and uh, Arn <laughs> says, I'm honored to share the stage with him. Um, and asks Jake, are you going to throw that snake at him? And Jake says, whatever I throw at Tyson is going to keep him down. Yeah. Um, and he says, Archer, if he gets a shot in, he's going to knock him out. Jake brings up Brandy again, says he'd like to bump into her. Mm-hmm. Um, and Arn says, Cody told him he doesn't want to win TNT title from the money or the fame or what anything else. He has to do it because he has to know that his leadership is being recognized. Didn't he call Brandy a bimbo? <laughs> oh, yeah, he did. <laughs> That's such an old school insult. I know. Uh, then Arn calls himself a vicious prick mm-hmm. and says, and the reason he doesn't cover the length of that table now uh, is, uh, you know, Jake, he does DDP yoga. And Jake's like, yeah. And uh, he says, yeah, I want you to be real limber when I you take a spine buster for me on Saturday. I shove your head where the sun don't shine. So Jake what's more likely to happen? What's more likely to happen? Here's the thing. Right now, I think that Archer is going to win this title. The presence of Mike Tyson. Okay, there's two things that make me doubt that, though. The presence of Mike Tyson and Cody reiterating over and over again, I need to win it. I don't know if Cody's going to proclaim, man, I need to win this. And then he doesn't. For me, it's more Tyson. It's more Tyson. And then there's Tyson because Archer's not going to win the title. There, there will probably be some. There's got to be some interaction between Archer and Tyson now. That now that's that's happening. There's no way that Archer's going to come come out on top of that one. This feels more like, and he can't win the title and then take a hit from Tyson. So this feels like Cody wins. Tyson has free reign, so they could protect Archer mm-hmm. using Tyson somehow. Mm-hmm. Cody wins, gets the title that he needs to win. Yeah. I mean, Cody kind of makes AEW a bit about himself anyways. So I'm thinking that maybe Cody's actually going to win this damn thing and Tyson's going to have something to do with it. That's my Yeah, I kind of started thinking that way too once they announced Tyson was going to be involved. Once I saw Tyson being involved, I was like, oh, this is. I not just quite don't. A sure I just didn't Lance. know like what level of involvement. I mean, it's it's you know. I think was it last week or the week prior when it was announced he's going to be there. We started going through the math of it a little bit. Yeah, no, we did, and and you were you were bringing up uh, how great it would be if Archer no sold a Tyson punch. That I don't think is going to happen. That'd be. I think that'd be the best. That'd be rad. You really want to make Archer into a thing. Um but uh, but I don't I, I just don't see that happening. I think Mike Tyson knows that he's worth a lot, and mm-hmm. he's not going to do that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm starting to think that our AEW AEW does actually do a pretty good job of building up guys to a point, like to making them believable. But then they always end up like losing, basically. You know, like. I don't know. Uh, I'm thinking of uh, well, like Brody Lee's gonna lose. That's gonna yeah. happen. Yeah. Um, but uh, like Hager, you know, yeah. Like yeah. He, he, they made him as believable as possible. And then he took that L to to Mox. Mm-hmm. Um, but they've done it before. Who did? Uh, yeah, Cody and Sean Spears. They built up Sean Spears really well, but then Cody wins. Yeah. I don't know. About, I don't know about Sean Spears' segment tonight. I don't, I don't think they should probably do that again. Oh, the the T A. Hey, that's I didn't have a problem. I thought that was really well done. I thought that was pretty good. Mm. It was cheesy, it was, but it, it, it was, was cheesy. cheesy. And it was. Go ahead. I was gonna say the green screen was good. Yeah, like I mean, like production wise, it was good. But mm-hmm. uh, I can't help but uh, 
think about the uh, week uh, weekend Monday after the weekend update when I see that. I know it's different, but it's oh it's, come on, his performance was and his yeah, material the, was the material was better, better, but just in terms of the approach, the uh, the segment, all that it's kind of a little too reminiscent of that for my taste. Anyways, next we had Darby Allen video package, uh, more of the same, the cutout mask stuff. Uh, I'm not. A, I'm not a huge fan of the. I'm, I wish that he'd stop with the cutout mask thing. Although I know I get it. That's his thing. That's what he does. I get mm-hmm. that. But uh, I think his his filmmaking skills are man, magnifique. Just yeah. great, great stuff. Uh, uh, so this was a bastard. welcome surprise. Yeah, bastard Pac promo man. This was. I love the little split screen with him and mask wearing, wrestling gear wearing pack and you know, like mm-hmm. business casual pack. Mm-hmm. That was rad. This Sunglasses was really cool. Pack. Yeah, it was really cool. Uh, calling out Orange Cassidy says uh, he's a marked man, which brings us to Orange Cassidy versus Ray Phoenix. Man, this match was fun. Uh, that sunset flip power bomb that Phoenix did on Cassidy was insane. Yeah, that was rad. Springboard. Gosh darn it, that was great. Uh, anyways, it's a really fun back and forth match. And then uh, Kip Sabian, he's in that ladder match, comes to the stage with a ladder. He's kind of distracting Orange Cassidy. That allows Ray Phoenix to hit a low blow on Orange, follow that with a rolling cutter for the win. Uh, so Cassie's up there. He does the thumbs up and then, uh, transitions to a middle finger. SCU comes out or Scorpio sky and Kazarian. They come to the stage. They start wiggling the ladder a little bit. Eventually it's tipped the ladder over. Uh, Kip takes a, a flat back bump in the middle of the ring off the top of the ladder. Brawl breaks out. Jimmy Havoc joins in just for fun. Cause he and Kip are buddies. not even in the match, not in the match at all. Brawl goes to the floor. And so Phoenix does a springboard moonsault. Uh, he came up a little short, didn't mm. quite rotate all the way, mm. and just lands right in his back on the floor. My hip would have just shattered into just pieces. Like his, you got like uh, five guys down there. Why didn't nobody catch them? Come on now. And then Cole Cabana comes out. He does the same thing. Nobody catches him. He rotates fully at least. So nah, people get their arms up for Colt. They know. get their arms up. I feel like they should have done a better job catching people. He got right back up, though. Well, yeah, he he's, throwing, he's you know he's, he's throwing some punches. He's he, he, he made the full rotation. He's he got all that adrenaline running. He's fine. Probably feels. Like I imagine shit, the way the way Phoenix landed, where he didn't quite uh, get the full rotation and land on his back, that probably <laughs> oh, knocked the wind out of him. God, yeah. At the it least. looked like that ref went down there quick. Was like, oh yeah. crap, because man, that was just a dunk. But he's yeah. a strong boy. He's he's used to the triple A stuff. Yeah, and then best friends come out and they help uh, Orange Cassie do like a flip of the top rope. He takes out everybody, smacks his feet on the uh, on the guardrail. It always makes me think. Whenever I see that, I think TK or Ryan break. I know. So. Oh, that was rough. That was rough. Uh, after talking about rough, uh, oh. Britt Baker's knee came out of this pretty rough. Chris Statlander and Hikaru Shida took on Britt Baker and Nyla Rose. Uh, this was this was a very it was a very physical match. I mean, some of it came off as a bit sloppy, um, hence the knee, uh, and then even like the uh, the the table thing at the end. Uh, I, w- I wonder how much that was improvised, though, because Britt was out of the match. Yeah, I don't know what else. I'm, I'm sure some of it probably was, but I mean, in the end, you've got Hikaru Shida and Nyla Rose. They're the ones fighting at double or nothing. Yeah, I, I'm assuming that the the plan was always for them to go through the table, because Nyla Rose yeah. picked up the pin here, but the, the, even AEW adheres to math. Uh, you know, because she's totally gonna win a double or nothing. So then Akira Shida puts her through a table. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it was a fun. Ma- I mean, other than that, it was it was a fun enough match. It was it just was a fun match. Let's talk that spot where Britt got hurt though. So uh, she's in the corner. Uh, Shida and Statlander are both in the ring. They essentially hit like a double team Death Valley driver on Nyla into Britt in the corner. However, when they do it, uh, they pretty much send Nyla. Or Nyla gets sent right into Britt's knee, her right knee. So Britt had, as opposed to, so if you're there in the corner, I'm just going to assume that the position you're going to take if somebody's going to Death Valley drive or somebody else onto you is you put your your legs down flat. But she had like her knee, her uh, right knee was bent. It was up. And it looked like when Nyla Rose came down on it, like that made that buckle. And it was, yeah, it, it looked really bad. Yeah, and then yeah. you could just see her. You could just see her selling it like the crap, like legitimately. I, selling I feel it. like I couldn't hear exactly what she was saying, but it, they had the camera real close right after that spot, and she was talking. I didn't hear exactly. She, what no, she, she said. totally was, and then you can see her during the scrum at the end with the table stuff. You can see her in the background because afterwards the ref came in. Like she wasn't in the rest of the match. I think she did like one spot with Statlander, 
Um, and then yeah, she Stantlander was... hit the, hit the the fisherman driver, mm-hmm. and then Nyla comes in, pulls Britt to her corner, mm-hmm. tags herself in. Yeah, right, right. Because and then they uh, do a suplex spot with Britt, and Britt couldn't jump to help her out with the suplex. Yeah, and then at the end, uh, after the match was over, the ref, <clears throat> uh, one of the refs, came over and uh, and helped her, like you know, uh, use yeah, they, the, they had the trainer come out and look at her knee too. So yeah, and then you could see her talking with them, like. In the distance, so well, even they cut to around the when they the trainer was was talking to her, and she was pointing. It looked like to the back of her knee. Yeah, thought it looked like. So hopefully it's it's nothing serious, no no tears or anything, because that's months on the shelf. But you know, it's this, you know the, this whole time where she's kind of reinvented herself as a heel, she's gotten herself over on the mic. So if it's a situation where she's good to travel, mm-hmm. you know she'll talk to you know assuming there's going to be surgery or whatever. You know, once that's all taken care of, then, uh, you know, she could still show up or do promos from home or her office or whatever. It definitely helps. It No, you're absolutely right. It definitely helps that uh, her uh, mic skills is really obviously what's been getting her over quite a bit lately. So, um, so let's see here. This is from uh, BMAC on Twitter at Milano Mob. Jim Ross confirmed on the AEW Dynamite post-show recap that Ray Phoenix is fine and that Britt Baker has been seen by a doctor for her knee. The status of her knee is unknown at this time. All right. Yeah, they probably won't know for sure until they do an MRI. Yeah, I would imagine so. Uh, All right. Which, I mean, they'll have... Here's the thing. They'll have that kind of stuff probably right next door at the Jaguars facility. Maybe. I don't know if they have MRIs at football stadiums. They have x-rays machines there, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously, they probably won't be a team doctor there. They'll be mm-hmm. medical staff there because I think you have to be. Um, but x rays not going to help if anything's torn. So disregard. You still need to go to the hospital. Yeah. Uh, after that, we had a Mox interview. Um, and he says, in the end, everything's reduced to violence eventually. He names a bunch of scenarios. You know, you, you stole my jacket. Eventually, I'm going to beat you up, yada, yada, yada. He says, it only gets worse from here, and it's going to get bad at double or nothing. Uh, says, Brody, I'm going to pick you up 280-some pounds and d- drop you down so it was enough force that will knock out a rhinoceros. Uh, you're going to go to sleep this Saturday. You're going to lose a match. You're going to lose whatever power you had, and all you'll have is a suit and the creepers to pair your shattered ego. Mm-hmm. I thought this was a decent enough promo. It was, it was good. all right. It was fine. <laughs> you always scrunch up your face. It was all right. It's all right. <laughs> Sorry. This, is, this is Dean Ambrose. Uh, after that, we had the Sean Spears News Network. He's got breaking news. Dustin has decided to retire. Is that is that a shoot? <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. Well, yes. That's 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 a shoot from Sean Spears. Uh, okay. Kayfabe. That's a shoot from Sean Spears. Okay. Okay. That's what I was checking. Uh, he concurs, congratulates Cody, asks if that's what he was going for all along. He says retirement is a tough pill to swallow. But swallowing pills wasn't that hard for Dustin 12 years ago. Ouch. Wow. Ooh. Wow. Man. Uh, he says, and you know what? He said, you know, also a tough pill to swallow. I don't have a match this Saturday, double or nothing. So, hey, I'm going to challenge uh, Dustin to a match. Uh, and now AEW. And then uh, they, they go to the commentators and JR's just like, yes, let's have that match. Here's the match. Sean yeah. Spears. Dustin. Yeah. Dustin yeah. Rhodes. Yeah. Yeah, Sean's probably going to lose that one. Yeah, probably. But I really like Sean Spears. And I like, oh, I like him a lot, too. So I know you didn't like this segment. I did. Because it's something a little bit different. It keeps him going. And he's so... I don't know. He's been so good in his character, man. He's been so damn good. I honestly didn't know he had... I didn't know he could do this. I really didn't like he was so just normal, regular guy. And like, I'm, I'm really figuring out like, okay, I think this dude, he is like raising his own ceiling. And I like that yeah. a lot. Yeah. I like that. Totally. Totally. Uh, next, we had a pretty cool Sammy Guevara, Matt Hardy video package. We're each we're talking about the incident <laughs> last week. Uh, Sammy talks about getting run over by the golf, golf cart, accuses Matt Hardy of uh, attempted murder. Um, and then Hardy retorts, says, the inner circle, we're trying to end our careers, he and Kenny Omega's, uh, back and forth. It was all really good, though. And that uh, led up to the main event, 
Sammy versus Matt. Fun match. Um, got yeah, a long match too. This is like a, the end. This is a, this is a, like a fifteen minute match, man. Yeah, they got tons of time. Mm-hmm. Um, there was this great bit early on. So Hardy was in control, and he had uh, Sammy down by the ring post, and he was talking crap to him, and he was like putting his finger on his eye and opening his eyelids. It's like open your open your eyes, Sammy. You know, see the truth. Mm-hmm. And so eventually, when Sammy um, got the upper hand, most of this happened in a commercial break. They kind of did the mirror of that, where Sammy had uh, Hardy's head against the ring post and was talking trash to him. I thought it was just a nice little touch. Yeah, no, nice it touch. was good. It was good. Also, <clears throat> I love how these kids are selling Matt Hardy's moves. Oh, the um, twist of fate, man. Sammy was planting his head on that mat. It's really great. It's really cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it took two twists of fate, I believe. Matt gets the win. Fun match. Afterwards, uh, Matt goes out and grabs a chair, brings it to the ring. Uh, Jericho shows up on the Tron. Uh, the inner circle, they have Kenny inside the football stadium. He's more or less wrapped around a goal post. <laughs> Jericho hits him with the bat a couple times. Young Bucks with masks on uh, show up in the stands. They do a couple, they do a leaps off of there, take out LAX. Eventually, Jake Hager, too. Uh, Nick somehow finds a chair. I guess maybe Hardy brought it down. Takes out Jericho with it. Oh, no, Hardy joins the fight after that. Brawl breaks out, and that's when you see Paige in the background. <laughs> Sprint the length of the field yeah. to clothesline Hager. He takes the fight to Jericho, slams him into the goalpost. Eventually, the elite fight off the inner circle. Uh, Paige walks back towards Daly's place while uh, the Young Bucks, Matt Hardy, pose with Kenny on a, a drone shot as it kind of lifts up. It's actually pretty cool. It's a yeah. drone shot. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was, it was a strong way to finish the show, I thought. And, uh, and yeah, so the, the, the Double or Nothing should be – it'll be a fun show. It'll be a fun yeah, show. It'll be a fun show. I wonder – I mean, I can't help thinking it's going to feel like a glorified dynamite just because it's going to be in the same place. Mm-hmm. But hopefully, they'll you know, they have all that Double or Nothing, like, you know, uh, uh, stage setting stuff. They'll bring that out maybe. maybe. You know, they, get the, they get the match in the football stadium. That's something different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's answer some questions. I'll go to the Patreon. Sounds good. Uh, uh, Steven Hansen, how do you think the Brody Mock storyline would change if Uno and Grayson were around? Of course, Uno is busy with his Twitch empire. Uh, mm-hmm. Stu Grayson, I don't know. I'm, I'm assuming they, they've been gone because of travel stuff, but I would think that maybe. Maybe. I think they're from Southern California. Oh, okay. I think say at least they used to wrestle there a lot, I think. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure, though. Um, I don't know. I feel like it might carry a bit more. Like the Dark Order might carry a bit more weight if they were around. I agree. Yeah, I agree with that. Oh, I mean, they're stuck they in, in. Our Lopez said they're stuck in Canada. Oh, that makes okay. more sense. That makes that sense. does make more sense because I know they brought. They maybe that's one of the reason they brought that Preston Vance guy ten into the fold because he looks great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, um, you got he got worked over pretty easily by Mox tonight. But uh, yeah, they just they'd feel like a, a, a larger threat if they were around. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, Asian Murr, who on AEW needs to change their finisher? Uh, MJF's armbar doesn't work for me. MJF should make everybody pick their own nose and eat it. There you go. And just do it repeatedly until they tap out. I'd tap out to that shit. I'm joking. I love eating my own boogers. You. Alex Levy, or Levy, uh, would you guys have preferred to have not seen Hangman tonight? Felt like they were teasing if he'd even return on being the elite, and just the Bucks showing up tonight felt big enough. No, nah, man, it was worth it for that sprint down the field. That oh, was hell yeah, man. You got to sell yeah, the man. show, man. You got to sell the show. Yep, yep. Uh, Gareth Nicholas, why wasn't all of AEW tonight just Arn and Jake in the ring talking with a bottle of whiskey? Oh, you don't want a bottle of whiskey around Jake. That's why that that particular idea didn't happen. But two hours of Arn and Jake would be great. I'd watch the show. Oh, man, I'd watch that all day long. It'd be great. Hell yeah, man. Joe Juarez, how much blood does Cody Archer demand? Uh, blood Lots. mask. Blood mask, for sure. It's got to be a lot. Yeah. It's got to be a lot. Absolutely. Remember the situation where it looks like Cody's a bloody mess, and, and Lance seemingly has it well in control. Somehow Tyson gets involved. Uh, so it's a situation where Lance like basically destroys Cody, and if not for a punch from Tyson, he would have won. I don't know if Cody likes doing the well, yeah, because then it's like okay, well Cody won, but that's like a cheap ass way to win, especially if he knows deep down that he got his ass beat. It'd be a cool story for Cody, mm-hmm. you know. 
But at some point, he'd have to have like a fair fight against Archer. Yeah, I don't no. know. I got to think about this. What are we doing our predictions for that tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow, yeah, probably. Tomorrow, we'll tomorrow yeah, tomorrow. All right. Tomorrow. It's thir- tomorrow's thir- it's Thursday already, man. I know, like, man. Good. This week's going by. Uh, Sky Otonic, could you see the finish to Cody versus Archer where Cody wins the title with some messed up finish like Tyson knocking out Archer? Yeah, totally. It totally happened. But Archer's got to look really good. Yeah. Dang MQ. Dang MQ. I think the mystery man in the casino ladder match is Drew Gulak. He is free to sign anywhere. Depends on if he shows up on Friday or even mentioned or is even mentioned on Friday. If not, I think he shows up uh, AEW on Saturday. I don't know the taping schedule for the SmackDowns if last week was the one they pre-filmed or not. But uh, uh, I'd be really surprised if he were on SmackDown this, this week. Yeah, it all. I mean, the fact that he hasn't. I don't even know if he's had a Twitch stream since then. I'm assuming that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you you would think that if he was re-signing with WWE, it would just be like an announcement, like they, or it would just be out there. You know what I mean? And but if he's signing with AEW, if he's going to be mystery participant, that's why he's going to be in, you know, uh, off the rate, off the grid, if you will. Mm-hmm. So I kind of, I kind of think that he probably he might be the mystery participant too. Could be, could be. Uh, I'll get to this one. Uh, Morpin Ravioli. Marco got destroyed by a botch on Dark this week. Also, this week probably made me less excited for Mox and Brody. And uh, they they just said that people have suggested Brian Cage or Flip Gordon for the latter match. Um, Brian Cage, maybe. I don't know if he's recuperated from his injury, but that's a possibility. Didn't Flip have like a 13 year deal with Ring of yeah, Honor? Yeah, I thought he had a pretty it was long like contract. a massive deal. It was like a five year deal, I thought. Yeah. Brian Cage, assuming he's healthy, that's a possibility. That's a possibility. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's it, it might be Drew, might be I don't know. Gamer Realm, would you guys see? Could be this guy. Would you guys see Mister Anderson coming to AEW? Would he be a face or a heel? We got against Mister Anderson, dude. He was he was going to be the one man. He was going to be the guy. Yeah, and he got a he bruise. Wasn't. Omega Advent, Steve Power Rank three movie characters you wish you thought of and could have put them in or have a comic book surrounding them. Three movie characters you wish you had you had created. Uh Anton Shigur. Yeah. Uh oh, uh uh Daniel Plainview. No. All right. Was that was that his name? Yeah. 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 Daniel Plainview. About Khan. And uh well, I was only 3 when Khan was or 4 when Khan was around. No, actually, if you go back to the original Yeah, story, I was I was, was negative was, like 13 when he was around. Yeah. Yeah. Um and then, uh, oh, easy. Scott Pilgrim, who actually originated as a comic book character, but man, that dude made a ton of money off the Scott Pilgrim mm-hmm. franchise. I tell you what. Uh, Joe Horace, should the stadium match be pre taped and have them CGI a packed stadium? Yes. Yeah, yes, cool. of course. Absolutely. It's funny, like somebody, you know, we talked about this before, but I saw this on Twitter. Somebody had said, you know, everybody expected AEW to be the the American New Japan, but it just turned out to be the American DDT, which is mm-hmm. totally apropos and it's totally true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like it mm-hmm. is totally. It's like part American DDT Pro, and it's also part ni- like Cody's bit is like 1980s NWA. <laughs> yeah, or or early 90s WCW. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, dang MQ, there are people who are negative about Mike Tyson and AEW due to his past. In recent years, though, he seems to have turned things around. Oh, you mean like uh, he used to beat, uh, he, he was a domestic abuse guy, wasn't he? Is that what they're talking about? Well, that and, you know, he, he was convicted of the of the, of the, of the, of the sexual assault. Sexual too. assault, huh? Went to prison for that, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty rough, but... You know, I mean, that was what twenty years ago. I'm not. I'm not saying, hey, everything's great and everything. It's like thirty like, years ago. What's that? About thirty years ago. Yeah, I mean, you know, if he paid his price and uh, hopefully he learned from it that you can't do that kind of thing. You can do. He's Tyson. Uh, the glorious Steve Klein. Would you rather? Would you rather get a Tyson face tattoo or a Cody neck tattoo? Cody neck tattoo. Yeah, especially on me. 
Like, I'd rather get a neck tattoo. I couldn't. I mean, both of them, neither of them are good. No. Uh, White Brownie 92, Power Rank 3 wrestlers who would benefit from a repackage. You know, that's one thing that I can't get behind at all is the face tattoo. I see so many of those out in public these days. I'm like, what the hell are these people? Like, you've seen Post Malone's face. Mm -hmm. What the hell is going on with all that? Don't know. It used to be only the weirdos would do that. <laughs> Remember that guy that got the he was he was like lizard man. He had like all lizard and he even had his tongue split. Right. Remember that guy? Yeah. Yeah. Man. Anyway, the three wrestlers who would benefit from a repackage. You know what, Cody? You got the neck tattoo. Just get face tattoos. Mm, yeah, but like bad ones, like where they just like it's obvious that they're like homemade, like a little scribble. Yeah, totally, totally. Bad tattoo guy. That's Cody's new repackage. <laughs> what was the question? Three wrestlers that what? Wrestlers who would benefit from a repackage. Brody Lee. <laughs> uh, John Moxley. You know, I was thinking about that, man. If Brody... <laughs> John Moxley. If Brody Lee... Well, he's gonna... He loses at double or nothing. What if the Dark Order abandons him and he just turns into a normal guy? That's all I've ever wanted from Brody Lee is Brody Lee to be a normal guy. I want him to be Dude Harper. I'm going to yeah. be Dude Lee. That's what I want. That'd be pretty cool. I want that to happen. Uh, Gareth Nicholas, we didn't mention this during our recap. Uh, I love that Shad got a shout-out at AEW. That they they uh, mentioned. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mentioned him and sent, sent their best to his family. Uh, Tot signs here in chat says, I wonder if he regrets being Lizard Man. I doubt it. Yeah, that guy seemed to be huge into lizards. Yeah. I mean, you went, you go the extra mile of getting scales tattooed on you and get your tongue split that's dedication adrian c says thinking that if whomever is the mystery opponent is an ex wwe employee rusev Ryder, rush the likelihood of them getting a title shot right off the bat is unlikely that being said whom in the latter match makes the best matchup slash feud against this potential ex wwe superstar uh, well, number one, I'm. Who's your early pick for ladder match? Mine, I think, is Scorpio Sky. I had thought about. Him. Man, he had a title shot already. What What is this for? You get a title shot? That's what you get? Yeah, you get to face Mox. Okay. Well, it's not going to be. If they. Look, they did that thing with Scorpio Sky. They're, they're, they're going to have to build him over a year to get him to that point. I don't think they'd want to do that. Have him another because he had a title shot against Jericho and he lost mm -hmm. that. So it's not going to be. I'm going to say either Darby or Ray Phoenix. Hmm. But then Ray won tonight, so probably not. But Ray is the only like Ray and Kip are the only Jimmy heels. Havoc. He's not the match man. He's going to find a way. Um, and I guess Mox is a face. Darby's a bit of a tweener. Ray's a heel. Darby and Mox have already have also had a had a match. It was a pretty good match, but also how many times are they going to have Darby fight one of the main event guys and then lose? And lose. They get they I can't know. do that too often. I know. So I'm, I'll say Ray Phoenix right now. That'd be a that'd be a good match with him and Mox. That'd be a good one. Uh, I'll uh, my early favorite might be Orange Cassidy. Now that I think about it, be a fun match for Mox. Orange Cassidy mm -hmm. could take a loss against the main eventer. Mm -hmm. It's not like he's going to be challenging for the title anyways any other time. No, probably not. That's my early early pick. I mean, he, he did have his head taken off. That's all the questions I have here on the Patreon. Same. That's all I got over here. All right. Well, hey, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We definitely appreciate it. Tomorrow, around noon Pacific 3 Eastern, we will be going live right here on the Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Stephen Larson with our NXT review, so be sure to tune in for that. Also thanks. tomorrow on Front of Club TV is Pin, Lose, or Draw. Oh, that's the most fun. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We appreciate it. Till next time, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye. <laughs>